Hello and welcome! You are listening to Elden Kings, brought to you by r slash Elden Ring Discussion and her sister subreddits. Our topic today is the Elden Ring zine, Beyond the Fog, which just started its pre-order phase as of December 5th. Featuring works from over 40 contributors, the zine has a wealth of Elden Ring fan content that you can check out yourself on their Twitter and other social medias linked below. Joining me at the roundtable hold are two contributors to the zine, Cassidy and Graham, to talk to us about their work on the zine and their creative projects as a whole. Welcome guys, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing pretty good. It's a uh, nice uh, 11 a.m. here on the East Coast. Yeah, it's a it's a balmy eight a.m. over here on the west coast, but I'm doing pretty good as well. Yeah, uh, rising yeah. early. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm used to it. I all my friends are on the east coast, and uh, yeah. I I I make sacrifices for art. <laughs> <laughs> the prices we pay to talk to people that live far away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I understand that your uh, your zine has a lot of contributors. Is that is it people from all over the world, or is it uh, mostly U.S. centric? Or do you uh, not know? I mean, I, I guess forty people. You wouldn't have uh, all the details. Yeah. yeah, like we have like forty six people just all together uh, who just responded to when we were looking for writers or artists or merchandise creators. Um, so I don't think we ever really kept track of uh, where they're from, but I would imagine they're pretty spread out. Yeah, I think there's some mm. non-Americans in there. Uh, you'd have to you'd have to sift through the whole zine to find out. Mm. <laughs> some soft <laughs> advertisements. I like it. <laughs> um, so. Obviously, I mean, with so many contributors to the zine, there is something definitely, I feel like, inspiring about Elden Ring to get this many people that wanted to just make art and content for it. Uh, Do you two Mm -hmm. have any um, personal inspiration from the game that got you into it? Oh, yeah. Um, Absolutely. I, I mean, just everything about the game, including its, like, source material, is, like, really inspiring just i love uh really giant knights in like a weird land and like just kind of in sort of considering the lore behind all the random stuff you see out there when you don't really know it you know the first playthrough i think is like mm. the most inspiring cuz you don't know what everything is and you just kind of see this stuff walking around this huge world and the implications behind it are, you know, immense. Yeah, yeah for, for me as a, as a writer, what really drew me to Elden Ring was, as I was playing this, the way I've, I've described this game is, if I could describe it in one word, it would be triumph. Because mm. it, really, it really feels like you are achieving something. Like, mm. there have been so many times when I'm playing this game where I thought, I want to commission and oil painting of like this moment from like this fight just because i yeah. feel like this is going like in the universe i can imagine this being like passed down and then you get into all of the uh like personal stories um like stuff like that with, with all these like different characters and learning like their backstory and how that how this world has affected them and how they've affected the world yeah, that was that was like a lot of material to to draw on for me, like especially from a writing perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, FromSoft has really made a richly novel world for us to discover and explore in our own dynamic way. I really love the grandeur that comes from watching some of the uh, just the giant set pieces that they've designed, like watching the caravans pulled by trolls down the roads, mm-hmm. guarded by you know, guard, like, soldiers and whatnot. It, it's very visually inspiring. And, uh, like Graham says, it's also inspiring in the sense of your own creative mind. I know that while I was investigating the different lore topics of the game and, like, reading up on the wiki, I'd have these very vivid imaginations of how different uh, 
events in the backstory went down to the point that I wrote fan fiction about some of them. <laughs> like it's it's very inspiring for me too. I have to say. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's just kind of aw- like awe striking the 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 whole thing. Just how much they were able to put into one game, um, and just like finding more every time surprised me, because I would think surely this is all they have room for, and then you know you'd find a, an entire new area full to the gills of like more stuff and more stories and more like things that have some kind of crazy lore implica- implications for that area and it was just kind of like mind-blowing yeah absolutely did either of you have like a favorite boss or npc questline from your playthroughs well i um i beat star scourge radon like before like they (laughs) nerfed him oh the first week (laughs) yeah i did yeah (laughs) that's Um, very memorable (laughs) like that's i think it's still (laughs) Uh, Elden Ring is is the first from Zoth I was actually able to beat, and even then, like Star Scourge Radon, I f- feels like like my proud as a compliment just for for me- like from anything like I've done involving video games. Uh, and I like most people. I also followed uh, Ronnie's quest line uh, quite a bit, um, just because I wanted to see uh, where that went, and that was very intriguing to me. Yeah, I did the same thing. I did not beat Star Scourge Radon before the patch that Graham is a powerful warrior in that regard. <laughs> um, but I also... Ronnie was just so enticing because I like weird, like, wizards. And she seemed to be surrounded by them. And then also mm. Blythe was there. So yeah. I had to know what was up with that whole crew. Um, yeah, she's got a very densely packed NPC group for her. Lots of people just hanging around. And they're all so cool looking. Like I I would have been sort of disappointed if they were all like you know, basic humanoids, but we've got Celibus who is a weird little guy who mm. just hides in his tower. He's an awful person. Yeah. He's <laughs> Does awful trying to things. he's a very, very awful person. He's yeah, but he's like not good at it either because he's like he's like giving you a potion. It's like, hey, can you get someone to drink this? And you just have to walk around asking people if they'll drink it. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so he's funny um, in that regard. And then of course we all, everyone loves Blythe. Blythe Ooh. is uh, you know, a it's king hard not to men. like the half wolf. Yeah, he's yeah. cool as hell. Um, and then, uh, EG is, you know, unsung hero. I feel like I don't see a lot of people talking about EG, but he's also very cool. Yeah, he, he fills in a lot of the gaps with, uh, a lot of the mm-hmm. stories going on. He has, oh, multiple I think, stories? the most dialogue of any NPC in the game. He's very dense. Whoa. Mm. Really? I actually didn't know that. I've only played that one quest line to its completion. Uh, mm. I, I didn't know he was involved in something. Yeah, no, like, uh, you, you talk to him and you'd be like, he tells you, be like, be like oh, here's uh, Bly's whole deal. Here's mm-hmm. everything going on with him. Yeah, he's a very dense character. But it, it, all of his dialogue's fantastic because he they really nail the whole wise old man that's mm-hmm. sort of doing something that he doesn't like but is doing it out of loyalty. Like, I... I really like his characterization. Mm. Mhm. Yeah, it's uh it's it's uh, similar to Wolf's whole deal in uh in Sekiro, but you know, older and wiser. <laughs> Indeed. So um I uh I know that Chromic Cam can't join us mm-hmm. today, but they are the lead in developing the uh Elden Ring zine, and I understand that you're sort of the right hand in all of it, Graham. Uh could you tell me anything about Um Yeah, it it's uh what is like exactly like right hand, like I've um uh Cam has been doing 
most of the work. They uh, they were the ones who put together the initial announcements. They're the ones in, uh, who are primarily in charge of the Twitter. Uh, I basically, my role was whenever one of the writers wanted a second pair of eyes to go over their writing, I would just look it over, uh, kind of kind of look out for like some little like spelling mistakes or hey, this could possibly be clearer. Uh, but I didn't really have to do do a lot of that because uh, a lot of the stuff that was submitted was very good. Um, yeah, uh, I, I also contributed my own writing. Um, I have I have a nice little story about Blythe and Ronnie that's in the in the zine that I'm I'm very proud of. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, it's mostly been uh, Cam who was basically putting everything together and mm -hmm. making sure everything looks as amazing as it already does. It was, it was kind of, it was very cool to see this zine sort of get in like the inception of the scene too, because, uh, I, re I think I remember like it was shortly after, like shortly after cam played the game for the first time, it was like just a fit of inspiration. Just like, I, they were, they were like, I must make a zine about this. Mm. <laughs> and because you know the it's such a rich world and it was like it was really cool to see them like so immediately inspired by it yeah, yeah i had seen that their previous work was on um i think a red dead redemption 2 zine so mm. i can see how they would have the mm. skills and then just play the game and be in completely inspired i mean i was mm. i was blown away when i finished it so i can only imagine what someone with like the skill set to get something organized would want to do you know yeah so have you two worked on uh, zines or other fan works in the past? Um, like, what do you think your contributor list is looking at? Is it getting a lot of people into the act of fan works for the first time, or are you seeing a lot of people that have already been um, sort of consistent with uh, fan fiction or fan art in the past that, that have been drawn to your zine? Uh, well, personally, for for me, this is the first zine like I've ever contributed to. Um, Same. Yeah, uh, but a, a lot of the artists that we have seen uh, definitely w have had the, and like an online presence for some time. Uh, mm. Who like we've had like some absolutely stellar people who I I'm just like amazed. Like oh, like you're here interested in like our little uh, zine project. Uh, I want to give like a special shout out to the person who made our cover image. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're an artist. They go by uh, Koei Kuhn on Twitter, um, like at at Koei Kuhn. Um, yeah, they, go check them out. They also have uh, a very, a very very nice uh, website where they sell art called uh, KoeiAndShy dot com. Um, that it's just absolutely incredible. Everything mm -hmm. they did. Yeah, it it, it seems like a lot of most most of the artists who joined have a lot of like experience on zines and making you know art of the things that they are major fans of. Uh, in that regard, uh, it, personally, it's been my first zine experience. Uh, you know, um, I just did some merch. I uh, I'm mostly I'm mostly you know. Uh, I only had time for that. I would have done something bigger if I could have, but <laughs> I've got a busy schedule. I completely understand the busy schedule. Uh, yeah. What kind of merch did you work on, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, sure. I uh, I made a phone background and a bookmark. Uh, phone background of just, like, the, the prisoner tarnished. Because um, I really like the, I really like the prisoner tarnished like starting class. It's they just nailed the design for that one. It's so cool. Just like your tarnished is wearing these like baggy peasant clothes and this like basic diving bell that like obscures all of your features, but your mouth and one eye. Mm. Uh, and then you have like a magic staff and you can do magic, and it's just it's great. I really like the prisoner class. Yeah, and I. Then, yeah, yeah. I I started my second playthrough, and I first time ever did like a magic uh, mm -hmm. build in a FromSoft game, and I chose Prisoner. Yeah, Sam. Um, and then the the bookmark is uh, what is the guy's name? It's like 
It's like Blackguard something. He's the guy who who uh, fry is frying shrimp in the in the Blackguard uh... Boggett. Yeah, that's I, I the don't, guy. I don't think I've I ever met him, which is I mean, there's a oh, lot no. of NPCs like I haven't. Met. He's <laughs> there's he's there's so many. He's great. He. I've not actually done his quest line or anything. I don't know if there's much of a quest line to do, but he he's like sitting in the swamp in Liernia. Um and it's like close-ish to the Mage College. He's like he's just kind of like squatting behind one of the like dilapidated buildings and there's like a giant pot of shrimp that is just like boiling. Uh and every time you talk to anytime you talk to him, he's just like, piss off. What's wrong with you? Get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. And he won't he won't say anything to you. Uh, uh, and I'm sure if you like advance his quest, he talks to you more, but I don't know if does. there's much more. It's it's sort of very sweet. He's like a bandit with a heart of gold. And uh, uh he, yeah. he goes to Landol, like outside of the moat with you. And <sighs> You can just chill with them, getting crab, and uh, it's sort of sad because the culmination of his quest line is that you can feed him to dung eater, which is like his worst <gasps> fear, and like it's oh terrible. Oh my god! You don't even have to do it to complete dung eater's quests. You, there's enough seed bed curses to just let him live, but you can be monstrous to this awesome, handsome bandit bogger, and. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, yeah. I mean, that's that's FromSoft for you. You can you can either be, you know, baseline nice, or you can be very very evil. Mm. And that's really established in Elden Ring with some of the side mm -hmm. quests. You can be super evil in this game, or at the very least, like apathetically cruel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, the next ending I want to explore is the the. The 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 evil flame. I forget what it's called. Uh, it's like the chaos. The chaos so flame early. is close enough. Yeah, it's the frenzy chaos flame. flame. <laughs> the frenzy, yeah, the frenzy flame, flame. That's frenzy the one. Yeah, 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 it's so early. I cannot even begin to describe. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that ending is enticing to me because it's uh, it's so the it's so just like. I feel like games don't really do this kind of stuff anymore where they have such like esoteric paths to endings. Mm. Like this, you have to go out of your way to find this ending. You have to like go through one of the like most I would say not the most annoying dungeon, but it is a very annoying dungeon cuz it's full of those uh like omen guys. Yeah, one of the strongest is. enemies in the game. <laughs> yeah, and it's like super labyrinthine and just really confusing, and you have to go all the way through it, and then you have to beat one of the like demigod bosses to get there, and then once you do that, you have to know to like take the all of your clothes altar. off. And... Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. clothes thing and the drop pit. There's so many like obstacles it's... to it. Yeah, and it's like it's all like sort of very smartly designed as if it's trying to tell you not to go here. Um and I feel like there's no games that really do yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think I I did get through it. I just I wasn't controlling the quest. I was mm -hmm. uh like I would ju I just had like a like a guide like on how to get through like this part. I just kept saying like, oh be this boss, strike the altar, it'll be real as fake, and then there was like a pit and like I just I, I just never w could figure out, like, huh, where am I supposed to go? All right, I'll just go and do something else. And then I just mm -hmm. never went back. Same. Yeah, I, like, because I didn't know about the whole clothes thing. I saw notes on the ground saying, like, take off oh. your clothes. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that. What if something, they're trying to trick me, obviously. Yeah. But, like, Melina kept telling me, like, yeah, don't don't go here. It's bad. And I was like, oh, damn, okay. I had Which I'm glad I didn't. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you go all the I've... way through this dungeon. It's super hard, and you get to the end, mm -hmm. and there's this door you can't even open. And Melina tells you to go away. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, here. yeah, uh, yeah. It would have, it would have really, you know, put a thrown a wrench into the whole Ronnie ending I was trying to achieve. Mm. So did you get the Ronnie ending on your first playthrough? 
Uh, the first one I finished. I I tried to do like a wizard build because I also had never really explored magic in any of the front games. It it didn't seem very uh, feasible in most of them. Uh, or I'm just not good enough at it. But in this one, it was. I I feel like magic was so. It, there's so much of it that I feel like it became much more feasible. Yeah. Um, but uh, I I ended up getting like put against a wall by the Godskin duo, uh, and I just remade a new character and just did a bleed build so I could see what the end of the game was. Because uh, that the magic build I had wasn't cutting it. <laughs> yeah, I think I was the the first in our friend group to actually finish it. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, because I, I got the, uh, I, I was struggling for a bit in the beginning, and then I got the Bloodhound Fang, uh, mm. which I basically just used the entire rest of the game, because I really had no other reason to use anything else. It's a good um, sword. Yeah, and that, that's also, that's where you first meet Blythe, and, uh, so that's another fond memory. Is it um, really? Yeah. Huh. You, Blythe can help you uh, kill the guy in the Everjail that you need to get the Bloodhound Fang. Whoa! I didn't mm-hmm. even know that. Uh, if if I did, it was replied, I never would have beaten him. He's very hard. Yeah, he's a he's a tricky tricky guy. That's also a great a great thing about this game. I feel like I I feel like whenever I talk about my playthroughs of this game with other people, it's like they always tell me something I didn't know because everyone's experience has been different. Yeah. And it's you know it it's beautiful. It's a beautiful game. I, I didn't even meet the turtle pope until my second playthrough. Oh my god, the turtle like, pope! I, I tried looking for her. And I I just couldn't find it, and then I went to like one little uh, warp gate, and mm-hmm. boom, I was there. So I had a Muriel. Yep. So good. Yeah, the game's just expansively unique in every instance, and it creates a very dynamic experience for each playthrough, especially blind ones. I'm very uh. I've got a lot of fond memories of mine, and also a lot of fond mm-hmm. feelings for Muriel. I love that guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was... It really was, like, the best first week for any game, I feel like, because mm-hmm. everyone was playing it for the first time, and it was just... It was, like, the most magical experience with a game that I think I've ever had. Yeah. I think the only thing that comes close is Sekiro, just because that game is full of like really cool video game moments that kind of blow you away. Mm. But if that one's just on rails. This one is like open, fully open, and anything can happen. Yeah, a lot of the time playing Elden Ring, it kind of feels like a throwback to like the old Nintendo like NES mm-hmm. days where. I feel like to, it's easier for like rumors to spread about Elden Ring. Like, oh, if yeah. you do this, you get this. Um, like, obviously, I don't think there's a cheat to get you a gun, but you can't <laughs> you can't disprove that there isn't. Yeah, I I remember in that first week, people were like, nobody had found like illusory walls yet, and mm-hmm. there was like a video going around of someone who was like, oh yeah illusory walls are a thing but in this one you have to hit them like 10 times in a row and then it'll happen and i was like that can't be real but it might be and they like posted a video of themselves in volcano manor like hitting a wall over and over again and then it disappearing and that wall Um, was famously glitched too i think they patched it pretty soon after (laughs) yeah It's like yeah, going it was... under the truck to find Mew in Pokemon. There's so many roommates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was great. And I was like, it was just really cool because I feel like game. there's no games like that anymore. Like, rumors about video games don't really spread because it's just everything is known about them before they come out, really. Um, and this one was just, it's, even if everything was known, it's like hard, it's impossible to communicate. Mm. everything that is in this game and for people to believe it until they see it themselves yeah i'm really yeah, hoping the... whatever uh, uh... no you go you go no I'm, I'm really hoping whenever uh the next from soft game like i could mm. fully commit to not looking at any guides not looking at any Same. anything just fully just going in blind and seeing what happens yeah 
I think that's the best experience. Um, I've played Dark Souls 3, Sekiro, and Elden Ring blind so far. Like, had I guess Dark Souls mm-hmm. 2 as well, but like that wasn't really with the mindset of an intentionally blind playthrough. I was just 14 and didn't know what was going yeah. on. Yeah, same. I Dark Souls 2, I was... Uh, I think it was 16 when I played it, but yeah, I, I like just didn't I, I should have because it took me so long to beat that game but uh that was it I honestly was closest as it that was the closest like feeling as I got to Elden Ring as well because I feel like Dark Souls 2 I didn't like look up anything and Dark Souls 2 I feel like is the most varied in like area when it comes it to a Souls the game. same open world concept, but with like the linear level design, I feel like. Yeah. And I feel like every area is very distinct and like different. Because I feel like Dark Souls 1 and 3, while I love those games, they are very similar throughout. Um, but Dark Souls 2 was just like every area was so different and had different like weird enemies in them instead of like variations on a night which was also like refreshing in in elden ring because i feel like elden ring had that as well Mm. elden ring truly is dark souls 2 the sequel it does everything the same but different again (laughs) oh i i haven't seen like a rat boss yet but that's probably coming in the dlc (laughs) oh man I hope so. <laughs> An entire DLC about underground rat warrens. It's not going to be about the frenzied flame or Mikola <laughs> or Godwin. It's about rats. <laughs> yes. Yes, the royal rat... Uh, <laughs> I don't remember the <laughs> boss, but it was it was like the royal rat brigade or something. <laughs> we got we to gotta bring that back. Mm. The secret demigod. <laughs> America's unwanted children. A, a swarm of rats. <laughs> you know, all the demigods seem like America's unwanted children. Yeah, with that, the way she treats them. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so going back to the zine a little, um, what kind of other merch is available for it? You mentioned the bookmark um, and the, the wallpaper. Uh, yeah, the, there's a bunch. I think... Uh, there's postcards, there's prints, there's sticker sheets. Uh, I think there's also desktop backgrounds as well as phone mm. backgrounds. Um, there's yeah. like, what else is there? Yeah, uh, this is like if you, like if you donate uh, like forty dollars, send the receipt uh, to either of our two charities, uh, you get like the full, you get the, like the full package, but you could also send them on uh, increments like. You could send ten dollars. You get uh, something fifteen dollars, twenty, thirty. Mm-hmm. Um, the four, forty is just for everything, but there's also different tiers uh, for it's the people the who are Elden Lord. Bundle. Yeah, people who are able to donate more, uh, they can get everything. Mm-hmm. I liked the naming scheme you guys used for the the tier rankings. Like you had Elden Lord, Limgrave, Lyrnia. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Just creative ways of doing it. Um, if you were to order the package, uh, would it be shipped through mail, or is it a uh, digital only, and then you print off what you buy? Uh, yeah, it's it is digital. Only. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We're we're still very small. This is like this is a lot of our first zine, so we're keeping it mm-hmm. um, keeping it uh, pretty simple. Uh, yeah, but uh, you make a donation to either Nova Ukraine or Arc Southeast, uh, and you send the receipt. To, I have the email right here. Um, uh, Eldenzine at gmail dot com. Uh, then uh, you should be sent the uh, tier that you uh, donated for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. and yeah. if uh, just in case anyone's wondering what those tiers are, the Limgrave bundle is the ten dollar tier. Liernia bundle is fifteen. Caleb bundle is twenty, Erd tree bundle is thirty, and Elden Lord is forty, and it's uh, all varying uh, amounts of merch in those in those bundles. Mm. 
it's nice that you were able to support like charity as, as a form of uh, creating the payment system as well. I like how you have mm -hmm. the donation mm -hmm. receipt system for it. Yeah. We, we, we wanted to make sure that like, since we are so new, like, uh, like there's an inherent level of like mistrust of like, Oh, if you just send us money, we'll send it. So we wanted to make sure that people mm -hmm. knew that their money was actually going, uh, to where, uh, they said they were going. Yeah, exactly. And I totally understand the non-physical shipping. I have a friend that does zines now and again, and she is mm -hmm. always in like a nightmare frenzy the week before it finishes, where she is wrapping yeah. and packaging and finding mailing stamps. And there's always something that goes wrong. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I can like the physical aspect. I think would be much much too much for mm. our small team maybe maybe much further down the road after a few oh, more yeah. zines we'll consider doing physical but um after a, a few more from soft games <laughs> <laughs> armored core zine when <laughs> uh we just got to make a bloodborne 2 zine just so we can manifest that mm. <laughs> make the bloodborne 2 zine before bloodborne 2 exists yes <laughs> the Just Bloodborne draw what PS1 you think, remake. Draw what you think the new bosses are going to be. <laughs> challenge from Soft to make them. I I mean, okay, you say that, you just reminded me that I feel like there was a FromSoft Reddit before Elden Ring had even dropped a trailer where people were just doing that. They were like writing like their experiences with the game before the trailer had even dropped and being like oh yeah wasn't like uh Gramiel the 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 forsaken he was a really tough boss wasn't he and oh man uh Dubrick's quest line made me cry and it's like <laughs> the, it was just lots of people just like making stuff up and it was kind of great to see. Yeah, that stuff will always get me. It's like, yeah. I love stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, there's something very delightful about like the collective r slash Elden Ring just going insane mm. from waiting yeah. on leaks only as oh, they begin to make up more. I think yeah. uh, Glaive Master Hodier was one of like, the really <laughs> popular names. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it's honestly, if you, uh, if you're like, if, if, if you're looking for inspiration for something or like a writing prompt, like look at that old stuff and like try and flesh that out, you know, that's a, it's a good writing exercise to just take a name and write something about it. It really is. You can just develop your own little OC character by adding a bunch of titles and additional mm. names and seeing how they develop. <laughs> mm. Who knows, maybe Glaive Master Odier will be in the DLC. <laughs> so it sounds like Elden Ring wasn't your first Souls game, Cassidy. Uh, what have you mm -hmm. played before? Uh, I, you know, I, I've played most of them. I haven't played uh, Demon Souls, because I don't own a PS5, but um, I've played all of them. Uh, I think I, I've finished most of them. I played Dark Souls 1 when I was in high school. Um, and then uh, that immediately... I, I like had Tetris Effect dreams about it, so I think that was like an immediate uh, sign that this franchise would sort of dominate my gaming life. Um, and I played pretty much every one. Uh, I played Dark Souls 3 probably... Not the most. I think Bloodborne was really the one that I played the most over and over again. Bloodborne probably... It's hard to choose whether Bloodborne is my favorite Souls game or Elden Ring is, because Bloodborne is just so good. But Elden Ring is also like such a crowning achievement, and I played like 100 hours in the first two weeks. So it's it's hard to say. Yeah, Elden Ring to me feels like something of like a magnum opus in the sense that it recompiles all of the themes that From Software has tried. So like it's hard no. to like diminish that in my mind, but Sekiro yeah. will always be my favorite, so I don't have yeah. to choose too hard. 
That one's so good. That that uh, game is like honed to a fine edge. It is it is like perfectly designed, I feel. One of the most tightly knit and designed games I think I've ever played. Like it it has everything in mind for the player's progression, from how it tries to teach them how to play the game to how mm-hmm. it will then challenge them later on. It's sort of incredible. Yeah, it's that is a that is like a I feel like a crowning achievement of video game design. And uh, Graham, what what have you played in the series before? Was Elden Ring uh, your first title, or no? I I've I've played Dark Souls one, two, and three. Never finished I, any of them. Um, Dark Souls one, I I had on my like three sixty. Like I couldn't get past the the Taurus demon. Um, mm. Then I had um, Dark Souls two. I <laughs> For some, I played Dark Souls Two. I played it on uh, PS Now because I got like a free week of that, oh, uh, nice. and I just only played Dark Souls Two. Got like halfway through the game, but after that week ran out, like I didn't play it, and pretty sure that's gone. I ended up replaying some of it this year, but a lot of the PC on PC, a lot of the uh, servers, I think, are still like down. Like you can't do any online stuff. So yeah, I felt like something was missing. So maybe I'll go back if there's ever something. And then Dark Souls three, that was kind of like the one where everything started to click. Mm-hmm. Where like that that was where I I really started to like finally like getting it. And I I, I <laughs> that during the pandemic there was a solid period of my life where the like the only things that like I really would do like on any given day was I would have Dark Souls three on one monitor and on the other monitor was I was rewatching Smallville. Nice. Like, yeah, that was yeah. I but I just couldn't beat the Dancer of the Boreal Valley for the life of me. Oh, I was, God. I was, I was, I was yeah. renting it for my library too. So uh, like even though I I kept re renting it eventually I was like All right, I'm just gonna give this back because like I, I don't think I can. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, I may be seeming very ignorant right now, but I didn't know you could rent video game AAA video games from a yeah. library. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe not everyone, but my library, my library. Whoa. Has that. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. That's a lot. Of, there's a lot of games like that's how I played uh, Doom 2016. Um, that uh, yeah, those I, are some big titles. Yeah, that would stress me out, I, especially playing Dark Souls three. Like, if it was my first playthrough of Dark Souls three, I would be so stressed because I would be, I'd be, I would, I got, st- I definitely got stuck mm. on several levels and several bosses in Dark Souls three when I first played it. Mm. I would be so stressed out about that. I yeah. would. My, my library also had it was a policy of unless someone was requesting it, you could just hold on to it, like basically. It would auto renew, uh, like when you took it out. Like mm. you go and take, technically go and take it for like a weekend renewal. But I would always get like an email, be like, "Hey, like you're just like you know, like we extended because no, no, like no one ever requested it because I, I think a lot of people don't didn't like even know." But yeah, wow. like, that's that's my Dark Souls three. Their their policy is if you mm. if you can't beat a boss after fifty tries, you have to get the <laughs> game back. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> No, but uh, like night and day, um, like Dark Souls Three was my boot camp that prepared me for Elden Ring. Mm-hmm. Um, like even even other like Dark Souls inspired games, I got better at once I started playing Dark Souls Three. Like when I replayed Jedi Fallen Order, a lot of the bosses that would uh, like really really like kick my ass a lot and. But like, I thought like were super hard was like were like super easy just on normal difficulty. Like I didn't have to put it down to easy to beat any of the bosses anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I think that out of all of the Souls series, Dark Souls three and Sekiro probably teach you like the most coherent sense of dodging that can be applied mm-hmm. to other games. Like I know that I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to say because I play video games too much and did so as a child. So, like, I'm just good at them. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, after playing Sekiro, I think, like, I, I went and beat it a couple of times because I really liked it back in 2019 to 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. 
And that sort of mm. elevated me, like, from just being sort of averagely good at video games to just not dying in a lot of circumstances. <laughs> like, yeah. it, uh, yeah, it was like a trial by fire, but it taught me a lot, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to think if Bloodborne teaches you anything. I don't think it does. Yeah, the, yeah, there, there's just so much. It's like every boss fight thing at Elden Ring is like the perfect balance of it feeling impossible when you first try fighting it. Like it just feels so insurmountable because like ugh, like they move too fast. I can't. Mm. I want to deal with this, but then you just keep going and going and going, and eventually you start dodging. You start countering. Or you find the weapon, especially in Elden Ring, because it's so much easier to go find, oh, I can upgrade this, or I can get stronger in this, and then come back, versus where I felt a lot of other uh, Dark Souls was, you'd have maybe a couple branching paths, uh, if, if you're lucky here and there, but mm. the, like, the level, the, like, the leveling was usually not in your favor, and, like, you, you usually just kind of have to push against the wall until it gave away. Dark Souls really favored you being a strong guy with a big sword and pretty much nothing else. In mm. Elden Ring, I feel like you could really... You could do any build if you tried. Yeah, Elden Ring sort of just... A lot of the stuff just works, even if you're not sure what you're doing. It sort of reminded mm. me of Final Fantasy during my first playthrough, with like a bunch of random overworld encounters you can just run away from. Some hard yeah. legacy dungeons to go attempt, and always the opportunity to power level if you wanted. Like, Yeah. Lots of uh, world bosses also is like an incredible like addition to this game. Like, yeah, World like... bosses are just so cool. <laughs> Yeah, the the first time like I met the Tibia Mariner, I was like, "This is what a weird and cool idea for a boss." He's just a guy in a boat, <laughs> a guy in a boat, just rowing through a flooded town, playing yeah. a horn to summon skeletons. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the I mean, honestly, the first world boss you ever see the the Tree Sentinel is like uh, that is like the coolest introduction mm -hmm. to that because he's so cool and he is so strong. Yeah, and it's that's like, another wow. thing where it's like, somehow I missed that. Like, when I left, I just didn't see him. Yo, you are not the first <laughs> really? person I've heard. Yeah, no, You're not I, the first when, person when I've I, heard who's done that. I stepped away, I just ran in direction, ran in a cave. The, my first boss was uh, the Beast Man of Far Missoula, and I killed mm -hmm. him first try. And I think that was like the... like the shot into my soul of, oh my god, I'm so good at this game. Which <laughs> I would I would come to doubt uh, a couple times, but I think... <laughs> Redon would I, beat that out of yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until I beat it out of him. <laughs> uh. That's pretty great. <laughs> I think my first encounter with the Erditree Sentinel went, like, talking to Vera and being like, this guy's obviously suspicious, and then Seeing the mm -hmm. Earth Tree Sentinel decked out in golden armor and like this giant halberd, I went and whacked it a couple times and was like, I, I'm leaving. This is not. I should not be here right now. <laughs> yeah, the game is good at teaching you, like, all right, you're not supposed to be here at this moment because everything will destroy you immediately. Right um, down to where they put smithing stones. Like, they'll just put smithing stones before a hard encounter to be like, hey, this is where your weapon should be at. Yeah. Go, go upgrade it. <laughs> Uh, what can you tell me about the different writing projects that went into the Elden Ring zine? Like, are there any teasers we can get about the titles, or um, what kind of topics we'll see? Uh, well, for me, from our, like I said earlier, like my my story is uh, like kind of like a like a fan explanation of how Blythe and Ronnie how they met and like how that friendship kind of came together. Uh, but yeah, we, we have a, a lot of different uh, writing projects. Um, let me look at some of them. And that's very cute about writing Blyde and Ronnie's relationship. Mm. Like, he loves her so much. He's very loyal. And I think they were foster brothers. Well, I mean, foster siblings in the lore. Mm -hmm. So I, um, yeah, I bet that could be a very interesting and sort of heartwarming thing to read. Yeah, um, a lot of the... Uh... Yeah. Plus, like, we also have a lot of other people who are during art to math-specific 
write like pie- pieces of writing that are in, which is I think is very cool uh, that you'll see in the in the final uh, final project. Uh, uh, what kind of writing? I'm sorry. Oh, um, like. Well, I, I said, like the um, we have art that's contributing artists that are contributing art to the uh, like the fan works, like the fan writing that is in the, uh, oh. yeah. Oh, there's fan art for some of the writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's really cool. Mm. Yeah, that always adds some oomph to have like a a picture alongside the story. We'll be right back after these messages. In the meantime. Why don't you tell us your own favorite Elden Ring boss in the comments below? The end of the Elden Ring zine pre-order phase is coming up fast, so make sure to go check out them out on their social media accounts linked below to check out the content for yourself. Pre-orders are available until January 1st. I'm unhappy, however, to announce that there is still no Bloodborne 2, or a Bloodborne port to the PC. However, PSX Bunlith over on Twitter has been working hard to make a better version that has long been awaited by fans. That's right, she's working on Bloodborne Cart for the PC. Go check out her Twitter for more details, including tech demo videos. Have you fought long and hard to become Elden Lord? Does your ascendancy require a sacrifice from the fair maiden known as Melina? Do you believe yourself to have the strength of a true lord? Descend beneath the capital, tread the path of true rigor, and take unto yourself the blessing of the three fingers so that you too can act as kindling, and spare the poor girl. Ah, may chaos take the world. May chaos take the world. Is there anything else you two would specifically like to bring up? Uh, um, about Elden Ring, or... <laughs> I mean, anything, Z? really. I don't know, it's hard to say. Mm. Um, there's, it's just such a dense game. I, I, I feel like just everyone should play this. I feel like even people who are not really into Souls games should try this. I've heard mm. it likened to, like, when the first ever Zelda game came out. That's how this game yeah. feels to... To people who have experienced that. I believe that. I feel like it's going to be very influential on uh, adventure and action games going forward. Sort of like mm-hmm. in the way Skyrim was with the open world uh, completionism yeah. craze. Mm-hmm. Yeah, But hopefully we'll get something wild. more esoteric. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah, there was a point I was going to say about that. It's just hard to imagine what, like, where the Souls franchise would go from here. That's something I've, uh, I've considered a decent chunk and talked about a little bit with, like, some of my more Soulsy oriented friends. It's like, mm-hmm. people have been talking about sci-fi Souls forever. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I know that there's games that like Souls like, but not like really like from soft mm-hmm. developed. Like I know the Surge is is one. Yeah. Where from what I've heard, the first one is pretty good, or like pretty good to okay, but then, like the second one is apparently like very good. Um. But, yeah, I like, both I, have I think, their upsides and downsides. Yeah, there, there's there's got to be like with everything, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, but, but like uh, but yeah, like, I'm. I do wonder because I feel like going away from Elden Ring's open world, like what that would look like for whatever future uh, Souls like uh, from from me. Like, is Bloodborne two going to be open world? Uh, should it be? Because mm. uh, I don't think so. Yeah, like yeah. like uh, the the open, the open world is good, but like not everything needs an open world, and yeah. just. Like Elden Ring uses it perfectly, but I mean, then again, like who knows? Because uh, we're not the ones uh, making the decisions. It could be uh, like the best thing in the world to have like an open world Bloodborne. We just don't know it yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think I think the FromSoft is smart about this stuff, though. Like I mm-hmm. I think that if they are going to make another game 
like either if it in a new world, I think they're gonna tailor it very specifically because I mean that's what Sekiro was. Sekiro yeah. was so specific and so tailored in its gameplay to how it was supposed to play and how uh, you know the story was supposed to like sort of shake out. Um, that I feel like if they are gonna make something else that's not Elden Ring, you know, I'm sure they'll. They'll put it on rails, but those rails will be really, really well made. Yeah, like I, like I, I I've, uh, I, I've heard like so much about the Armored Core series that I'm very interested to see what. I'm also kind of like glad that even if Armored Core is like nothing like a Souls like, because yeah, yeah, from Soft, like I don't want them to feel like they have to only do like a certain mm-hmm. kind of game because like they used to do all types of different genres before uh, Demon Souls came out. Uh, and like it would suck for them to be pigeonholed and mm-hmm. uh, only forced to do one thing. I mean, if I remember correctly, I do think Armored Core is nothing like the Souls games. I think it's like a mech fighting game. Yeah, it's very, very different. Yeah, it doesn't like even the dodges are more of a boost to avoid lo- missiles that are locked onto you mm-hmm. rather than like iframe mm-hmm. dodge a giant sword. You know, it's yeah, yeah. Man, well, you got me thinking about a sci-fi FromSoft game, though. It would be really good. I've been thinking about it since Dark Souls 3. Like, sci-fi uh, Souls when, please. I want to play, like, I a know. cyber ninja, something absolutely absurd, you know? Yeah, yeah, or a robot. Yeah, an android. Yeah, that'd be perfect. I think it's sort of incredible. I mean, you two brought it up, you know, the sort of clash in design philosophy, because Sekiro is extremely narratively driven, to the point where, like, mm. the world only matters in the sense of how it interacts with the characters. To the point where it's Ashina named after Ishin Ashina. But mm. then you've got Elden yeah. Ring with an open world that's designed at a scope of an entire continent and how it's supposed to portray itself to make you feel like yeah. you're exploring a fallen kingdom. So it's like, the the world the design definitely falls into the scope of what they intend with their story. It's just like whatever scope they're going to go with, because at this point it's so open ended. They finished the Souls series. They're restarting an old, ten year old game series with Armored Core. They've expanded their team and their directorship, but like, where are they gonna go? Bloodborne two, Sekiro two, a new IP, sci fi Souls like. Yeah, I want Bloodborne <laughs> two so bad, but I don't know what they would do with that. Because Bloodborne it, on its own is so esoteric and weird, I yeah, I, I just don't know what the follow up to that would be. I can't think of a good yeah. story continuation for it, but well, I'm that's, sure that's, something would work. That's the thing about Bloodborne is it's the story is so you could you could miss it if you even if, you could play the whole game and miss the story because that was my first playthrough of Bloodborne was like I played it. Mm. And then when people would ask me, like, oh, what was the game about? I was like, I couldn't tell you, actually. Hunting beasts. Um, <laughs> yeah, killing beasts, question mark? And even now, I'm still not fully clear, but I've read enough item descriptions that I think I, I kind of get it. Yeah, it's um something I think that helps understand from soft stories is that they almost always follow a three-act structure, like... Bloodborne mm-hmm. follows the first act of you seeking pale blood, which leads you to the mm-hmm. healing church, where you then yeah. learn that pale blood is related to Bergenworth, so you go to Bergenworth, yep. where you then re- realize the secret behind the old ones, and that you have to slay the nightmare, and then you go do that. So yeah. there's like a there's a breakdown to it, but it is so convoluted, and the actual like motivations of why the world is the way it is is so obscure because it like you don't meet Lawrence until the DLC, and then he's a big monster. Yeah, and Gearman's exactly. just a crybaby; he's not gonna say anything to you. Hmm. Yeah, it's all that that one. It almost is like the the world is more important than the characters in that one. Uh. Which is, again, just very interesting design philosophy. It helps um, establish the the topic of cosmic horror, where people are small mm-hmm. in comparison to the world around them. Yeah. Which, you know, it's it's kind of crazy that Elden Ring doesn't make you feel that way, because, like, the world is huge in Elden Ring, but, you know, instead of being big and scary, it's big and inviting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, it's it's all about triumph and... Like, 
so many times, like in this game, like our roadblock set aside in front of you, and you just say, "Nah, I'm just gonna keep going anyway." And I, I think, I think because like what drew me, especially this game compared to the others, is like dark, like Dark Souls, Bloodborne. You are toiling um, to do something that is, yes, good, but also you're mm-hmm. like Dark Souls. You're basically a lot of the time well. fighting in order to set yourself on fire to keep the 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 first yeah. flame going. Uh, it's where, good, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, which is like yes, a good, worthy sacrifice. And like I love like those kind of stories of like toiling just like to make a sacrifice, but something mm-hmm. about the idea of you know Elden Ring, you become a lord. Like that, that is that is the end goal. Like that is what you are trying to do, uh, where you are basically going to become, uh, like probably like the final boss of the next Elden Ring. Yeah. Well, that's this also has the most endings of any Soul game, I think. Yeah, it has like six endings, doesn't it? Yeah, because you uh... you have, yeah, you have the regular ending. You have Ronnie's ending. You have the Dung Eater's ending, Frenzied Flame. Uh, then probably like one more. Gold yeah, I think there's... Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It sort of shapes up to four Elden Lord endings, I think, and then to mm-hmm. destroy the Golden Order endings through regression or causality, depending yeah. on like your vibe. I think, yeah, I think Ronnie's was one of the destroy the Golden Order vibes. Which yeah. you know, good for her. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Slay it, girl yeah. boss. Yeah, <laughs> um, um, yeah. I, I just want a patches ending, like somehow I he winds up Elden Elden yeah. Lord. Where is patches' <laughs> ending? He's been in all the games. He deserves it. That's a, that's another NPC that I'm mad because like I tried looking for him, I just could never find him. I I know what his He's... encounter is like. He's like in yeah. like a cave somewhere. Yeah, he's in a ran- he's in one random cave. You I don't remember it's you know what it is? It's the one um you know where the first like mine is in Lem- in Limgrave? You have to like yeah. go through like a sort of chasm and then that one bloody finger guy invades you. Yeah. There's a cave right around where that bloody finger guy is. He's in that cave. Okay. And he like shows up, and you like there's like a chest full of clothing, uh, and if you take the clothes, he shows up, and he is like, "Are you taking a man's belongings?" And then you like beat him within an inch of his life, and then he surrenders to you, and you can either continue to kill him or you know spare him. I, I also know that what happens if you try to bring him to the, the Radon fight. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was my only interaction with him my first and second playthrough. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's such a funny character and I like that he is in all the games, but uh I w- I don't know that he's in Sekiro. I hope he is just secretly somewhere crouching in a corner, not understanding a word that anyone is saying to him. Technically, there's like this bandit equivalent that sort of treats you in the same heartwarming way and is trying to sell you stuff, but he's not patches exactly. Sadly, yeah, no, he's cool. He like he's like a nice guy. Um, patches is sometimes a nice guy. Sometimes he has a redemption oh, arc in Elden Ring, which I love. Tana at the Volcano Manor, like oh yeah, yep, yep, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, Ian, you know what, where is, where is Patch's Elden Lord ending? The more we talk about this, the more I am, I am convinced he deserves, he deserves it. Yeah, the Tarnish just swears fealty to Patches, and <laughs> fights all of his battles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's a like, fanfic. The, I'm picturing, like, the final boss, but uh, it has, like, Patch's, like, head, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Patches, Elden Lord. <laughs> Patches Beast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I, you know, it, we talk a lot about patches. I I haven't fully looked through all the zine material. Uh, you know, get the zine. Maybe maybe there's a story about patches in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, well, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a blast talking about Elden Ring and, uh, of course, you, Zine. Yeah. I can't wait to see it when Ooh. it comes out fully. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a it's a very like very I, I really I'm probably gonna join more zines if I can just because it's very cool to you know collaborate with other artists on something that we're all passionate about. It seems yeah. like a ton of fun, honestly. I was um I've been tempted to throw my hat in the ring with like writing projects before for the stuff, mm-hmm. but I've never had the courage to. You yeah, know, it's a. Uh... That's a very interesting way to kind of like fit them all over your head and um like I haven't I haven't like written like too much like fan fiction like like officially like before in my life, but like just thinking of stories I wanted to, to tell and just kind of going over the like the the first meeting of Blythe and Ronnie and like that blossoming into a friendship, that was something that intrigued me. Yeah, it, it's also a very cool. Uh, like I, I, I remember I used I went to art school and it was very cool. I liked seeing like other people's projects and like, like seeing what other people did with the same prompt. And it's like this was kind of like that where I really liked. It was just a cool thing to see like oh everyone like see people's projects come in and be like oh this is like what everyone did with mm-hmm. like this prompt and like ev- like this is all Elden Ring related so it's like oh everyone's Elden Ring piece is so good I love it uh, I highly recommend honestly I really uh, it's a really cool like experience working on a zine well I'll have to try it out sometime then uh, uh, thank you too for coming on again once again but also for contributing mm-hmm. to the zine uh, I'm always happy to see more content like that out in the world so yeah, of course. It was yeah. uh, it was great being on the show. I a big podcast fan. I, I like uh, I like uh, you know collaborating with other artists in many different mediums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. Well, make sure to check out the Elden Ring zine below. I've got links to all of the social medias in the descriptions, and um, of course, I'll do an update on my Twitter when it comes out. So, yeah. Thank you once again to our awesome guests from the Elden Ring scene for joining us at the Roundtable Hold, and thank you to all the viewers for watching. A special thanks to Chromic for organizing such a cool project. Keep up the good work. Once again, pre-orders for the zine are active till January 1st, so make sure to go check them out before it's too late. For those of you still fuzzy on the details of Bloodborne's story, I'll be releasing an article on my personal blog, Sigil Tower, in January called Bloodborne in a Nutshell where you can read about the entire backstory of the game at your leisure. Check out the link below. Next episode is an exciting one where we'll take an in-depth look into Elden Ring lore and how it reuses tropes from previous Soulsborne entries into the series. We'll even have a special guest star more knowledgeable than I to help us look at all the details. Thank you once again to all our viewers, and don't you dare go hollow on us.